All right, everybody, rookie mistakes number two. You guys seem to love number one, so I'm bringing this one back. I just finished recording a video for my patrons. This one is more of a career in skateboarding video. It's kind of about the things that I chose to skate when I was younger and trying to make an impression versus what I actually enjoy skating and what I skate today. This one's only for patrons. If you're interested, I have tiers as low as a dollar a month over there and I'm going to be making a lot more videos over there and also doing like meetups and Q&As over there. So if that's something that you're interested in, check out the Patreon. There's a link in the description. Today's video is going to be about not rotating your shoulders. But I wanted to let you guys know that I also have not using your arms to balance, extending your legs too much, and beginners trying to skate like experts all as upcoming videos in this Rookie Mistakes series. If that covers things that you're interested in, go ahead and let me know below. Also, if you have other parts of skateboarding that you're not sure about but you think they're mistakes and you want me to touch on those either in a video or uh, make a video specifically about that, let me know in the comments. I like to respond directly to you guys. I think you know that if you've been following me for a while. There's been some pretty decent success recently, so I'm trying to make as many of these videos on po as possible. And all the great comments that you guys give me, they're like coal that uh, keeps this engine moving forward. So let's get into the video about not rotating your shoulders. So the last video was about not squatting enough and how that's impeding your possible pop and your balance. And for the purposes of these videos, the reason I did this one directly after that one in the series is that these things work in tandem. And the way that I think of skateboarding and have adapted to think about skateboarding and my body movement, my kinetic chain specifically, is I think of an x-axis and a y-axis, right? So if you're not squatting enough, right, you're not properly utilizing the y-axis, right? So this is causing you to have less leverage. This is causing you not to use your pop as much as you could. And it's also impeding your ability to balance on slides, right? So that's the squatting portion, that's your y-axis. But there's also an x-axis. And if you've watched a lot of my videos, you've probably heard me talk about keeping your arms up and about rotating your shoulders for certain tricks, right? Now there's a time and a place for rotating your shoulders. I think I talked about in my Ollie video how beginners will often, instead of using their legs, so using that Y axis to control their Ollie, they lack the musculature necessary to get a good clean Ollie and to create that snap. And so they'll rotate their shoulders instead. Now this is improperly using the x-axis. The proper way to use it would be the way that you do when you do a backside 180 or a backside flip or a backside 360, which I think I'm gonna use examples of in this video because as you guys know, if you watched the last Rookie Mistakes video, I like exaggeration where movement is concerned. And I like it especially for beginners because a lot of you guys wanna have a style like the skaters that you watch, but you don't realize that the reason they have their style is because they mastered the fundamentals. So it's not necessary for them to move in the exaggerated fashion that is necessary for you guys as beginners learning to skate and developing the musculature necessary to support the movements that you have to do. So I'm gonna use a couple of backside 360 examples in this video. One's gonna be down a giant gap where I break my tail in the process. And that backside 360 was a first try backside 360. And the reason that I was able to make this happen first try is that my shoulder rotation was on point. And for tricks like back 360s, the shoulder rotation it's going to be more important than just about anything because assuming you can ollie, the shoulder rotation and using your shoulders to kick off the rotation of your body and board is what's gonna dictate whether you're able to do the trick or not, right? Now there are other things that come into play like did you bend your knees to pop? And after you bent your knees, did you lift your legs up? But that's gonna come into the x-axis and that video that I had about 
not squatting enough and how that's stopping your impeding your potential and the next video that I'm gonna have about extending too much right because I'm that's gonna be one in the series too but when you look at these examples, you're gonna see that for backside 360, me being a goofy footed skater, right? If I use my right shoulder as the first example, I rotate my right shoulder in the opposite direction, so front side. And after I've wound up sufficiently, I start to wind back, right? And in my backside 360 video, I cover this, but I'm using this as an example because it's one of the most visible ways that I can, visual ways that I can describe using your shoulder rotation and how important that is for you, right? So I'm gonna rotate my shoulders front side, the opposite direction of the way I'm trying to turn. If you were doing a front side 360, you would do the opposite. I don't do regular stance front side 360s very much because every one I've landed has ended in my nose being broken and I don't care enough about the trick to fix it. Uh, that's just me being lazy. But So I'm gonna use back side 360s as an example. I rotate my shoulders in the opposite direction. When I rotate, in the backside direction, again, I'm going to start to bend my knees, right? And I'm going to pop when my shoulders and my board are parallel. So shoulders are just above the board, and my, that means I'm squatted to the full depth that I'm going to squat at that same point. So it's gonna take you a while to get down the timing of these rotation tricks because this is the same way that I do a backside 180. This is the same way that I do a backside flip. I'll throw another example of a backside flip I did over a big gap in downtown LA, and that was, I believe, first or second try. And it, the same thing, these rotation tricks, they're kind of a little hack because once you get accustomed to rotating your shoulders properly, and you'll have to rotate with less exaggeration, the better you get at the tricks because you'll develop the musculature, the muscle memory, and you'll just be comfortable and familiar enough with the trick that the rotation will just dial up and it'll guide your board for you. But once your shoulders meet up with your board and you're at the full depth of your squat, that's when you're gonna pop. Now the important thing, that I, the mistake I see a lot of people making, even when they are rotating, is they'll wind up, they'll rotate back to where they're parallel and then they'll stop rotating, pop, and continue rotating. It has to be one continuous motion for the rotation to actually help, right? Because we're using momentum to help us get our bodies and the board around. Whatever you do with your body is gonna dictate what happens with the skateboard. Remember I talked about this in the last video. We need to get over thinking of our boards as, as doing anything. Our board is an inanimate object. It's only reacting to the information or the energy that we put into it. Same goes with rotations, right? X and Y axis. Right now we're focusing on that X axis. We're gonna rotate our shoulders and we're gonna squat on the Y axis at the same time. And we're gonna continue the rotation as we're popping so that our pop is actually going to transfer some of the rotation into our board as well. And that's what's gonna allow you to turn. So I see this issue with a lot of beginners when they're learning backside and frontside 180s is they're thinking of it as popping and then turning. And there's a reason that a lot of people think of this and it's gonna go back to one of the same things that I've been harping on. It's you're watching your favorite skaters and you see someone like Chris Fanner for, he's, is a great example because he does these big back 180s, right? And it looks like he's doing them almost late, like he's doing an ollie and then he's turning. And he is turning a little bit later, but you as a beginner are not going to be able to accomplish this maneuver and if you try this way, it's going to deflate you because you haven't developed the muscle memory then the musculature necessary to do this. You have to properly use your kinetic chain and develop the core strength, develop the quad strength, develop the rotation in your, in your body before you're gonna be able to backside 180 like Chris Fanner. Before you're gonna backside 180 the way that I do sometimes. Because uh, sometimes I just feel like popping a big ollie and then turning late. But if there, I can only do this because of years and years of practice and deliberate practice. Deliberately practicing that specific movement. But that movement is a step or two above where you beginners are at when you're learning how to backside, when you're learning how to frontside 180. So you're making a big mistake by not rotating your shoulders first and also by not timing rotating your shoulders turning back and squatting, and then 
the ultimate mistake that you're making, if you are accomplishing the first two, right? If you are winding up in the opposite direction and you are squatting as you wind back, once your shoulders meet up with your board, you're stopping the rotation and then popping. So everything that you did before, the, the beginning half of your trick, it's all in vain if you stop your shoulder rotation to pop. So you have to get comfortable with winding, starting your rotation and squatting at the same time, and not stopping your rotation, but popping where your shoulders are parallel with your board. And that's gonna work for backside 180s, frontside 180s, backside flips, frontside flips. You can get away with doing frontside flips in a different way, but I talked about that in my frontside flip video. I'm not gonna do it here. Um, and for backside and frontside 360s, 540s, everything. In fact, if you don't master the rotation of your arms, your hips, and your squat, and how to time these, you, you, I can safely say you'll never get to the point where you're able to do a 540. Uh, Tyson Bowerbank, one of the few people who can do 540s in the street. Look at the way that he skates. His rotation is perfect. He's, he times the rotation of his arms and the squatting of his lower half perfect. And that's why he's able to execute those rotations. So that's a big rookie mistake that I see people making. Not using their rotation. And if they are using their shoulder rotation, not using it properly. I hope the analogy of an X and a Y axis helps you guys to understand this. I realize that for you younger guys that haven't taken any, uh, haven't taken those more advanced math classes, you might not understand that. Uh, so maybe go online and look look those up, right? But you guys that are a little bit older, like I think I think I learned this when I was 10 or 11. I don't know. I'm not sure. Been a long time, but. Uh, if you do have an understanding of what that means, I hope that analogy helped you guys out. So yeah, rotate your shoulders. Time the rotating of your shoulders with your squat. Do not stop rotating in order to pop. You have to be able to do these things in tandem and you have to be able to use one to assist the other. This is very important because as skateboarders, we are using our body to manipulate an inanimate object. And we're all used to using our hands to manipulate things. We might even be used to using our feet to manipulate things, but as we're skateboarding, we're actually using our body. We are use our feet are what's connected to the board, but since we are not able to use the flexion of our toes very well, since we're in shoes, unless you skate barefoot, in which case you're a so you're a psychopath, and I'd like to see it. But uh, most of us aren't going to be skating barefoot. Uh, yeah, you're using your body to transfer that energy, and your feet are simply the extremity that connects to the object you're manipulating. I hope that helps you guys out. Let me know if there's other rookie mistakes that you might have seen and you might be uh, curious about that I didn't list in the next videos that I'm gonna be making. Thank you guys for watching. Oh yeah, con concussion update. I'm starting to feel a little bit better. I got in about 15 minutes of skating yesterday. Made me a little dizzy, but I was able to do some tricks and it, oh, it felt so good after, after being on the shelf. I know this hasn't been a particularly long injury, but since it is a head injury, there's a whirlwind of emotions that I've gone through and just feeling like I would never be back to normal. You know, the, all, all the things that we go to when we put so many hours into doing something and it makes us happy, it's a big part of our routine, of our personality even, which is not healthy. Maybe I'll talk about that too, because it's not healthy to build up too much of your personality around how well you do an activity like skateboarding. I speak from experience. I'm dealing with the ramifications with that now as a skater at an advanced age, at least for a skater. But uh, yeah, I'm starting to feel better. I'm not gonna put my foot all the way down on the gas pedal yet. I'm gonna be smart because I don't have too much long left to do this and I wanna enjoy the rest of the time that I have. But uh, thank you guys for watching. Enjoy skateboarding.